invitation. So, good afternoon, everybody. So, thank you again, Chris, for this invitation and for this support for me, for financial support of my staying here <coughs> and even my uh, journey, my trip. So, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so, it's extremely important for me. Uh, now, let's uh, you see, I am in a difficult situation because I am after talk of uh, Tiziana and after talk of Peter, how to, how to make, how to present interesting talk after such person. So, so but I try, I, I try to do something, uh, I hope non-trivial. Uh, non-trivial for physicists and, I, and not, uh, not trivial for others. So, you see how ambition it will be. Universality of markets. Uh, of course, I should define the term universality uh, because, uh, um, yeah, it's not only physical sense but also wider sense. But during my talk, so in fact, my talk is to define this term universality and uh, base it on, on many, many empirical data. Then to to emphasize that nevertheless we are even obliged to speak in terms, uh, in terms of universality. Uh, so let me uh, to present co-authors. Of course, Jean, everybody uh, know him. Uh, now, Mateusz Den is, is my PhD student. Maciej Jagielski, just almost, I will present this, his work. Uh, most of my presentations, his work, in fact. Uh, Maciej Jagielski is my, I am, I am his supervisor, just finished, uh, two years ago finished, uh, gave, uh, present his PhD, Took, uh, one year later Tomasz Gubiec, now Maciej Jagielski is in Sornet uh, ETH, almost finished staying, one year staying, before it was three, three months in Boston, so you see <coughs> that we have cooperation. Tomasz Gubiec just obtained what I said uh, Fulbright uh, for a half year uh, staying for, uh, in Boston. So, okay, I have also a few other PhD, uh, but uh, we are looking for some, uh, not for, not for fund, be because we have, but rather for some very interesting, uh, how to say, interdisciplinary places. Uh, uh, what is interesting, what is technically interesting, that uh, paper number six just published, appeared just one week ago. So it's open for you. Uh, so in fact, I will present this, this work. Uh, basing on data, on data uh, given in one, two, three, four, it's finance, and geophysics data taken from paper number five. So it will be, uh, in fact, it will be, uh, Econo, econo geophysics, more than econo physics. Excuse me for this joke, but but it in fact uh, our our work is inspi inspired by geophysics, by earthquakes in geophysics. But how far we will see. We will see how far. Uh, okay, uh, I must say I must continue this uh, few sentences of Tiziana. Uh, I am also. Uh, remote student of Montana, of course, and uh, how far I am remote, namely in 1991 uh, appeared paper and just 1992 or 3 I read this paper I was stricken by this ideology that, that central, <coughs> central limit theorem is fall down for financial markets. So because as a student I was learned Central limit theorem. This is absolutely fantastic. No probability, no statistics. It's always central. No Gaussian uh, reality is Gaussian. Oi, <laughs> Bashelyev uh, philosophy cannot exist uh, without central limit theorem, theorem, and so on and so on and so on. And suddenly, Montana uh, completely changed this viewpoint. He proved, basing on the empirical data, that even if some of uh, 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 elementary variables is enough large, then statistics of the sum var summarized variable is non-Gaussian, it's Levy, it's Levy distribution. So generalized Hinch and Levy theorem is present 
there. So, and everything was based on Milan Stock Exchange. So, uh, in fact, uh, if you are, in fact, he said in saying in, in human language uh, that Milan Stock Exchange is criminal because the probability of speculation is extremely large. Fat tail exists. So, so you see, uh, uh, you wish to <laughs> some human <laughs> physics means human face. So human faces. So some criterion how to say. Um, when when this control system should intervene on uh, market, uh, just this alpha should be uh, enough large uh, to avoid this control. Uh, okay, but it's a digression. Uh, but in my to my personal feeling, just uh, starting with with this paper, in fact, um, began uh, modern econ econophysics. Okay name appeared appeared a few years later but uh, as, as Chris said but uh, in methodology this sense of econophysics started in my opinion uh, just from this paper modern econophysics yeah of course. but would it not have started earlier maybe with mandel fluids uh, no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> very good question because the cascade of papers avalanche of papers okay, started yes, from the, listen, yeah, listen if you look i have this picture if you look for the number okay. of papers is yes, first yes, order phase yes, transition is a jump uh, 1993 two years yeah. later is jump okay. but uh, definitely this Mandelbrot, of course, of course, Mandelbrot is from Poland, this family is from Poland, Sierrats, from Sierrats, <laughs> I'm patriot, you know. But nevertheless, I should be true and say Mandelbrot is an interesting paper, but not avalanche, not started. So, in physics, in physics, avalanche in physics. Uh, okay, let's continue. Uh, okay, generic goal sounds bo boring, but I hope presentation will be not too, too boring. Uh, gen generic, general goal is to present a novel, advanced way of the non-Gaussian time series classification. Uh, it will be some new elements. So it's, it, this presentation is, is even new for physicists. You see, appeared one week ago. Appeared this paper. So uh, and now schedule. Uh, of course, problem should be precisely defined, if possible. Uh, defined basic on geophysics, basic on geophysics, uh, and now a result of this, result of this, of this one is is uh, extended the Gutenberg-Richter law, law as, uh, concerning earthquakes for financial markets. So this will immediate immediate consequence of this uh, uh, of the definition of the problem. And then appeared super statistics. I would like to describe data using super statistics or complex statistics. And then we observed, we observed, our colleagues, Armin, uh, paper one till four, observed empirical data collapse, and we tried to describe this, this uh, data collapse. And now it's completely new, uh, it's super scaling. During my talk, I, I, I will present you the superscaling, what I mean by superscaling, so be, I hope it is enough intriguing for you, uh, and you will stay still, not go out, uh, so <laughs> I hope. And now, um, yeah, okay, definition, definition is uh, to describe a universal or semi-universal, still I will not define this term, but, but soon, behavior of empirical statistics of interoccurrence or interevent times between excessive losses, excessive, namely two large losses, uh, again we've been precisely defined for a moment, and separately to excessive, excessive profits, as well as of interevent times between earthquakes, having a bit above some threshold defined by Richter scale. So you see, uh, I will bridge, I will, I will move between earthquakes, geophysics, and, and finance, and finance. Uh, two concrete related problems based on, on empirical data uh, regarding uh, finance, namely finding a probability of losses greater or equal than some threshold value. 
So we introduce philosophy of threshold. So threshold is always present in our, in our life. Uh, we automatically use thresholds, namely internal thresholds, looking for, let's say, estimating the probability, is it, is it worth to, to, to be active at the moment or not? It's, it's, we, we introduce, we use a kind uh, of threshold. Yeah. Uh, Finding, next point, is finding of probability distribution of inter-event times uh, between successive excessive losses for various values of threshold. Namely, we look what happened at given value of threshold, and then we move this threshold and look what happened with, uh, with properties, how, how, they, how, they, how properties change when we change threshold. Now, uh, uh, now defined... On a network? Uh, now definition. The precise. This is look for this. Look for this. Not not on the network, but uh, look for the for the definition. Namely, we have pr price returns. Definition look using finance. So it could be extended to another another quantity. But let's look another another uh, uh, branch of, of science or field of research. Let's look for price return, and then this red this red. Uh, this red line, this red line, is uh, our threshold. For the moment, uh, to, to, be, to, to better uh, presentation, I, I, I use losses. Losses means uh, ex excessive losses means losses below some minus q minus q threshold. This red red line. Excuse me. This is this is too too high. This should be should be here. So, so you see excessive losses here are this, this one. And now, now, uh, now you can change the sign and, and speak because we are separately speaking about losses and, and uh, profits. So now let's concentrate on losses and uh, you uh, forgot about sign. This one here. It's less dangerous for you, maybe. Less dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not dangerous because my rate, you, you measure my, if you see, you measure my <laughs> stress, <laughs> my, <laughs> my, <laughs> my stress. <laughs> 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 okay, now, you see, uh, now we are concentrated, yes, yes. we are concentrated on excessive losses uh, above in the sense that I forgot about sign above this threshold and now we measure the time distance between subs subsequent subsequent losses here and here and here this is our stochastic variable so activity activity of uh, stock market and also individual humans is measured by these time intervals. If time intervals is, is, is large, is long, that means, long, that means, what is it? Lunch break. <laughs> Nobody is working, no activity, and you have, of course, using this delta t, you can, you can look this intraday uh, extra pattern, uh, ex extra pattern, just this lunch. Uh, delta T is maximal uh, for, for lunch time, for lunch time, well known, well known intraday pattern. Uh, you, can, you can discover by, by using just this, this, this time. So therefore, statistics of inter-event inter -event times is very important because it's statistics of our activity, activity market as a whole here. Uh, so we concentrate on this one. Of course, of course, there is dependence. Namely, if you have, for example, if you have larger, larger losses, then distance between them is also larger, because uh, no company is able to to keep uh, state if uh, loss if losses are too large. So, so therefore, uh, only from time to time appear large losses, uh, but uh, but. Uh, uh, but we are, of course, uh, looking for, for any, uh, for whole hierarchy of losses. So, so we feel that we have a lot, of, a lot of losses, let's say a lot of losses, which is such 
large and larger and larger, and now it's only one large, in this time interval, it's many years, only large, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, very extreme, large losses, destroying almost everything. Uh, so you, you, you see hierarchy, so intuitively you can say that, that description using power law uh, is natural way to characterize uh, this hierarchy which we see from the first drugs. So intuition is uh, agree that uh, with, Man, uh, with uh, Mandelbert, of course, but with Mantena, uh, that power law should now be present at the different activity uh, at stock market. Now, now is uh, geophysics um, in some sense, namely, let's take the value of this threshold, value of this threshold. And now, let's define probability that loss, absolute value of loss, is larger or equal this threshold. Of course, you can use it, this, uh, this cumulative distribution you can, you can describe using the density probability, the density probability or probability that epsilon is located between epsilon and delta, and epsilon plus delta epsilon. This one is, is probability, local probability. Now look, if this probability is 100, what does it mean? It means that one, once per 100 days happened the situation where epsilon is larger or equal to Q. Therefore, one over this probability, this hundred, this hundred, is a, a measure of typical time distance between subsequent losses. So now, if you look, take this cumulative distribution function, make this inverse, you obtain capital R, Q. And this is interesting because it's to take into account this quantile philosophy, namely quantile mathematics, quantile philosophy, is ready to describe situation where power law appeared, because uh, when power law appeared, sometimes a uh, moment does not exist, for example, second moment, variance does not, not, does not exist, but uh, corresponding quantiles uh, exist. So, so it's better, of course, uh, this is coherent, quantum philosophy strategy is coherent with power law, Mantena, uh, Mantena uh, strategy. And now you see in Lovelock scale, we observe that the, the set of points, namely black is uh, US dollar Great Britain pound uh, exchange rate, the standard and poor five, another, another market, IBM, another market, and now another. You see representation, typical representation for, uh, for different markets, for different markets. And now, now you see, we obtained results. Uh, let's look for, for continuous, uh, continuous line, continuous line, and uh, let's look for all lines. Yeah. Uh, you see, we obtain a class of dependence, and we focus our attention for some purposes, which I will start uh, discuss later on. Uh, we obtain the following result, namely stretch exponential between RQ and Q. There is stretch exponential, namely, namely typical distance, typical distance between subsequent subsequent earthquakes uh, above uh, threshold Q. Uh, stretch exponentially depends on Q. In this Gutenberg-Richter law for earthquakes, eta is equal to one. It's well-defined fact, well-defined exponent, and eta equal one. But for uh, finance, we obtained results uh, basic on data from Armin and co-authors. Uh, we obtain uh, this stretch exponential. How large is eta? Let's look here only for this column. Let's forget about other. You see, US. Great Britain is point, point 0.9, error uh, outside the error, error is small, relatively small. The standard and poor 500 is uh, point 0.7, about, about, about point 0.7. Here IBM is point 0.8, and again point 0.8. Uh, this is a <coughs> crude oil, yes, West, West Texas Incorporation, something like that. This is extremely important. Why? Because having this one, we can find this density, 
density for losses. Density for losses, immediately basing on the empirical data. This extended uh, richter gutenberg law. And we obtain in a Weinbull distribution what it means physically. It means that epsilon, this, uh, could, could I, uh, um, this epsilon behaves like, behaves like extreme event. Sorry, extreme event, because the, it is described by by uh, by uh, uh, Weinbull distribution. Weinbull distribution. So a three of the kind of distribution: Weinbull, Freshet, and Gumbel. But here appeared uh, Gumbel. Other 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 distributions cannot fit uh, cannot fit anyway these the curves. So now now we see uh, we see mm, uh, I, I would say. Uh, nice big, big beginning. Now here, here is, is how, how this, how it looks presented. Here it's not very important. Everybody can, can make this picture. Now, now, next step. Next step again is inspired by econo-geophysics. Okay, geophysics. Namely, this is a distribution of time intervals for intensity of earthquakes above some threshold. Threshold defined by Richter scale. So uh, about here is Q is 1.5 degree of Richter scale, here is, and here is 7.5. Of course, these lines are shifted, a little bit shifted to be better uh, visible. So, so please look for the shape of this one and not absolute position. Shape is most important. Absolute position is scaling, is, is not very important. So, so you see, in, in earthquakes, People measure directly, directly looking for seismograph, can directly measure, uh, measure this, can directly construct this uh, histogram, this psi. And of course, we have a uh, completely analogous situation with losses. We have losses above the threshold. So let's make histogram. And we will look what we obtain. So this is inspiration, and I don't want to discuss this point. I'm concentrated on, on financial market. Uh, before, let me, here is the result, but before we go, um, digression, namely, we also, excuse me for too many, uh, not, not look at the moment for this one, but look here. So, you see, we can define uh, this typical time distance at condition that previously uh, this time distance uh, was RQ, RQ0. This is probability, this is the distance at condition, RQ, at condition that previous time distance, time distance was RQ zero. So in that way, we are looking for two, for dependence of two subsequent uh, typical mean uh, time distance or inter-event, uh, inter-event time uh, interval. And you see, there are data which if if there will be no no dependence, then the data then we should obtain horizontal line. And for some uh, for some threshold, very large threshold, it happened. But typical behavior is that there is dependence between these time uh, intervals. So they are not independent. They are dependent quantities. So it's digression. Like at the moment when I will speak about project because it's in fact well-motivated project. Uh, uh, of course, we can, uh, we, can, uh, we, can, uh, we can calculate these solid lines, but at the moment it's not uh, so important for, for main talk mainstream. Now results. You see, uh, the, the, the data from different markets, IBM, Nasdaq, uh, Yen, uh, so uh, Forex, and now it's Brent, so, so oil, and here is the stock market, and, and another Dow Jones Industrial, a lot, a lot. This is the data, namely, this is daily data, daily. Let's look for a moment for a daily data, and you see this data is well described by our formula. From what we have this formula? This formula, uh, Maybe a moment. Uh, look how how streaking is this result? Because you see this data 
are from, for example, this data are from 2004, that two, two years, that two years, again two years. So during two years, two years, uh, you still observe the power law. This power law is ex except this one, but, but for this is for very and Q is equal to two, namely the, the, the threshold is very very near. But if it threshold is higher, you see you see always power law. You see always power law. So singularity is present on this on market uh, uh, over quite long period of time. You cannot forget about, uh, so to say, crisis, because this crisis influence over m probably many decades. Still, the singularity, namely power law, is observed. Here is for two years, but we have data also quite, uh, you see, we have even data from one, uh, we, 1709 till 1008 to three, so almost one century, and still, and still, you have power law. So the singularity cannot be damped by Gaussian behavior. Uh, it's always, uh, sometimes, it's, this his, this influence is very, very low. For example, the amplitude is small, but shape, shape. For statistics, if you would like to calculate something, you should use not, not Gaussian, but unfortunately, the, this statistics for time intervals. Time intervals, you see how it is inset, how it is sensitive to activity, to activity. So if I would like to start, let's say, project to, to, to consider the human behavior, to, to start the age based model and so, just I would like to use a quantity which is very sensitive to activity. So that means statistics of inter-event uh, types. And now uh, the, the fit is quite good, but how, how we obtain this Psi? You see, this is this Psi, which is inspired from geophysics, Psi. Okay, Psi is defined here, a little mathematics, a little. Excuse me, because afternoon, so maybe I'm tired, but I will be, uh, I, I hope it's not so difficult. So this is one statistics, but this is conditional statistics namely appear such inter-event time at condition that the next loss is exactly equal epsilon. And now is a weight, weight which we obtain from empirics, capital D versus epsilon. So this is our um, quantity. But now what about this? Let's start with the simplest. Always we study exponential at the beginning. If there is some deviation, we go to another uh, elementary conditional uh, distribution. So now we start with um, exponential, where tau, namely this is the mean time, of course, considering epsilon larger than q, uh, mean time to uh, loss, which is exactly equal epsilon but above q. above q and this quantity this quantity stay here if you put if you put this tau uh, let's represent this tau by uh, such such uh, uh, ansatz which uh, comes from physics namely uh, valley model there is some arguments uh, yes there are some arguments now 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 you see, after calculation, we obtain the following uh, called formula. Then it's a power law for any time, for any delta q, any delta q. It's a, it's a power law, that's, delta q is variable, delta q, power law multiplied by some incomplete gamma function. So asymptotically incomplete gamma function uh, reach gamma function, but for intermediate time you have uh, you have some uh, uh, additional uh, how to say um, uh, scaling breaking by uh, this uh, correction to scaling by this uh, uh, incomplete gamma function. This is our uh, formula, uh, and we can and this this solid lines just is nothing than this formula. This, Low parameter formula. This low parameter formula. And now, now, f final point. Namely, uh, everything depends on the on the Q. You observe this uh, data collapse. Yeah, data collapse is here. Well, well observed. That delta collapse is here. You see many, many 
of these points uh, collapsed for one curve. It's for Q equals 70, 70 uh, is uh, RQ. RQ is one to one correspondence to Q, you remember. So this is 70, 30, 10. So if you have threshold, for given threshold, you have data collapse. And now, how delta collapse characterized by given alpha, by given alpha. How this alpha depends on Q? And again, this power law again depends, uh, the alpha depends uh, in the form of power law. Uh, on Q, logarithm Q or logarithm RQ, this is, this is the same. So you have scaling of scaling. Uh, coming directly from empirical data. Nothing with sophisticated manipulations. Directly from data, you obtain scaling of scaling, which is, we call it super scaling, which is quite, which is quite new. So that's uh, quite new, very new. So now, uh, final statement, namely what about profits? For profits, okay, error for profits is too large. So I cannot obtain too much. I cannot make business with these histograms, but nevertheless, roughly the tendency exists. So again, our psi, but now for profits, again reproduce empirical data, a lot of empirical data from Armin, and we formulate the following, uh, following ansatz, namely there exists functional, not literal balance between losses and profits. And profits. So they, they differ by parameters, but, but shape by function uh, describing is the same, is the same. Uh, now, uh, okay, why Psi is so, why Psi is so important? Because from ps having Psi we can construct risk function, hazard function. Having hazard function we can construct value at risk. Uh, so this Psi has additional application in finance, direct application in finance, uh, just via, via through the, uh, through the value at risk uh, approach to risk analysis. So, uh, and now is geophysics again looks here. Uh, solid curves are curves which are, uh, which are combined with psi when, when you have, when you assume that larger, larger losses are uh, uh, less probable, maybe the distance between them is larger, is psi. But if you assume that the larger losses are more probable, are more probable, the distance, time distance between them is shorter. So when 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 crash, when crisis appear, when this component just play the role. If one large after another large and another large, so three such large earthquakes and city is destroyed. So that's uh, uh, this is a full curve described by our formula, our formula, uh, you see how nice it describes geophysical data. Uh, just this taken from finance. Uh, and now, now question, big question mark is the data, uh, which and there's a correlation factor. You see time interval number j, time interval number j plus s. You, uh, s arbitrarily large, ar arbitrarily small, as you wish, s. So then you can measure correlation factor as a function of time distance between, um, between time intervals. So one time interval, another one, and distance between time distance is S. Uh, S. Then you see what happened. Correlation factor depends on S. It's not flat line, but there's correlations. So correlation, again, we observe long-term correlations. But how to describe this one? Nobody knows. And this is our project to start to describe long-term correlations between this time interval, between activity or market activities. So that's uh, this point I would like to finish. So thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, okay, that's it. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I don't know if you have some questions or comments. Yeah, I don't know why I have one also, but yeah. the person you go first. Okay. Um, okay. I have one. I'm coming from a completely different perspective. Yeah. Uh, as I listen to your talk, the first thing that comes to my mind is the notion of what's called a mark point process. You're thinking about a mark of, you know, some kind of point process. 
and these things evolve over time and time difference between them. Uh, you know, I have a relationship. And that. I noticed you didn't use that word. And in my business, where I look at uh, statistical distributions, the first thing I'm thinking about is alpha stable processes. Another thing that I'm thinking about, if you had that data up there, was this notion of a subordinate, a subordinate process, sort of uh, coming from the work that, um, and that what's it about? I'm coming from a probability model, so I don't have a lot of Because it's exists some transformation between delta t to make the process and my program or correlated or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. This, oh, okay. this, okay. this result is really, which uh, makes it. This so you're just, you're just looking at an empirical kind of process, is that right? You're just looking at data and trying to fit uh, an alpha, a, a tail distribution. The question is that what kind of process we, we need? My answer is we deal with continuous time random work. But more, what precisely, I, I cannot say more uh, besides what I see from the data. It's, it's strange because we are at the very beginning uh, we see we have this psi describing the statistics of time intervals. Right. And this time intervals could be continuous. Uh, this is not Markovian definitely, mm -hmm. not Markovian. Right, right. But we have single variable statistics right. and some supposition for two variable using copula function, of course. But I okay. cannot use but it's that very difficult to use copula function when you have power law. So copula function for, uh, for fortunately exists from Vine Wood. But mm -hmm. does not exist so for could could studies does not exist so could studies well describe uh, uh, single variable statistics mm -hmm. but not uh, many variable you see from the single variable point of view extreme value extreme value process extreme uh, value uh, behavior of this data is equivalent in some sense to uh, could studies because the discrete curves are almost identical. But if you look for, for, for correlations, then you have filter. Filter which uh, remove your good size in, in an improper, and then you go to true analysis. So uh, co conclusion, what we should learn from this, we should treat this as, a, as an initial step. And to this, this real step, true step, is looking for, cor for correlations uh, between uh, activities, between activities, long-term correlations. So that's a question, a big question. Uh, what is the process? How, how to describe it? And so on and so on. Right. Uh, Paulina, maybe you have a question? Yes, I just had a oh. very general question. Okay. Uh, so based on the existing uh, time series and the time yes. interval, if you don't consider the period with the financial crisis, can you predict it from the, uh, from the time intervals, this, this uh, particular event? Because it would, of course, uh, the most interest. You mean non-stationarity, because the system is non-stationary. Uh, yes, yes. Sense, you, non the you see, we, we, avoid, we avoid the answer to this question because we look for, for returns. But returns is a difference between a two divided by some, some number, but, but it's a difference. So yes, the difference, yes, yes. You, you, you cancel this uh, sometimes systematic, it's, it's cycle or something like that. You, you observe on the noise, we try to observe on the noise. So your question is outside uh, this one because uh, because try to, we try to avoid it. So remove so de de in some sense it determined some in some sense the systematic deterministic curse is removed from this day, from this day. So I cannot sorry look only, I, on only looking for noise uh, yes for, noise. for this yeah. how to say for for market and human uh, uh, emotions. <laughs> because it's the use of language, some kind of emotions, but, but the question of course is very good questions. So. But it's not terrible of everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, Manu, maybe the, the last one? Uh, are we over time? Uh, if it is a very long question, no. No, it's not long. It's point. just because you always you, you talked about the star Q. Yes. And then it was seemingly function of this B. And I always try to say, but what is this B? No, before. Before. What is this PQ? Uh, if you look for a Remus law, for a Remus law, there is tau versus e epsilon versus energy. Uh, we have 
for a rainy snow, we have, if particle is uh, in the valley and move in this valley, and then if uh, there's a barrier, and if a uh, barrier is larger, then particle should move longer before consume quant energy and make a jump. So then, uh, natural way is, is, is the same that if the, the, the loss, epsilon, is equivalent to depth of the potential. So if the depth of the potential or loss is larger, then you should longer wait for, uh, until it appears, yes. So then natural way is to take, is to take the exponent, I can other, there's no uh, other, I, I could argue why it is an exponent, but I should uh, use function which monotonically yeah, increase with to, epsilon. But it does not have to Yes, for, for, for example, to, this one. Yeah, it, it's what an example. Yes, yeah, example, oh, the example, yes. Okay. And then I look for the result. Okay. If agree, okay, okay. That's, that's good okay. example. But, but that's n I have no that's proof that it's unique. Okay. You know, it's no proof for that. Of course, maybe another class of... Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.